How's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so this time, as I said at the end of the last one, I'm going to be talking about one-off stories. Um, and what do I mean by one-off stories? Um, a one-off story for me means any story where it is just a story that is a complete thing in and of itself. There's no prequel to it, there's no sequel to it, or at least it's not supposed to be. <laughs> it just exists within itself and, you know. So Echo is a one-off story um, because there's no prequel to that story, there's no, there's no planned sequel to that story. I don't know what a sequel to that story would look like, quite frankly. Um, it is a contained individual book that is not part of the series. That is what I mean when I say one-off story. Um, having said that, a lot of what ends up being a series, I initially go in thinking, yeah, this is going to be a one-off story, and then it ends up being a, a series. Um, Realms and Reality, certainly, I think, when I started writing that. Uh, the Tales Saga, when I started writing that. Uh, they were definitely supposed to be one-off books when I started writing the Bird French and Mary series. Again, I think that was supposed to be a one-off book. That's why it's written, the original document is written in, and divided into parts rather than written as individual books. Uh, this uh, Say You Send 4, again, the first book of that was supposed to just be a one-off book and then ended up being this four-part series. Um, so I, I think what I'm saying is I'm not very good at actually writing one-off books. <laughs> I mean, Hyena Boy is supposed to be a one-off book, and I'm currently writing The Companion. <laughs> but having said that, the, the thing with, with Hyena Boy and, and my current project, and this is part of the reason why I think I want to talk about one-off books, is that both the stories in and of themselves are one-offs. Um, Hyena Boy works as a story on its own without you reading my current project and my current project will work as a story on its own without you having to read Hyena Boy. Um, however, reading both, you know, it, it, it broadens the experience. It gives you extra information to whichever other book it is and it gives you a, a larger story, but you don't need to because the books themselves are not sequential books. They are overlapping books. <laughs> <laughs> they are companion books. They, they are heavily interlinked, but the two stories work completely separate of each other. And, and that is by design um, going into to doing the, the my current project. I've designed it to be a completely separate thing from Hyena Boy, but connected to Hyena Boy through the characters, through certain events. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's designed to complement the other book, but they are, in and of themselves, individual stories. They are one-offs. The fact that they are interconnected one-offs completely beside the point. <laughs> they are still one-offs. Um, so one-off books is something I think I find occasionally. I want to be able to write more. Um, certainly when I went into to writing Echo, yeah, I intended it to be a one-off and it ended up being a one-off and I was perfectly happy with it being a one-off. Um, so I didn't see a way of making it sort of expand into a, into a greater series and I don't want to expand it into a greater series. Um, and the great thing about one-off books is, um, because they are, as I sort of mentioned in my, my series talks, um, having a series is great, it's fantastic. Once you've hooked the readers in, you know you've got more books that they're going to enjoy because they continue that particular story. But it's harder to market and package the beginning of a series than it is to say, this is a standalone book, you just need to read this book, and you've got all the information that you need from this book. You know, there's, no, there's nothing more beyond this particular story apart from this, this singular book. Uh, enjoy. And, you know, it's in some ways, it's a lot easier to get people to take a chance on that than to get people to take the chance on the start of the series. Um, so I do attempt, as much as possible, 
when I go in to write one-off books um, and not to write sequential books. Um, so therefore the idea of having to write or the idea that I am currently writing a companion book to a one-off book seems kind of counterintuitive to that. Um, but I think you gain so much more from this second experience that it, you know, the, the two things will, provided I pulled the ending off the way that I now envisaged it, you, there is so much to be gained from either reading one or the other book by themselves, and certainly not to gain by reading the two together, but it's not a necessity. When you're talking about a series, Quite often, in order for you to appreciate the story as a whole, you need to read the whole series. Yes, each individual book within that series will have its own merits and will probably tell its own um, individual story. But in order to sort of, there, there's an overarching grand narrative that tends to go through a series. Um, and in order to appreciate that overarching grand narrative, you, you need to read the whole series and, you know, it can make a difference what order you read that series in and, and various bits and pieces like that. So one-off books or self-contained narrative books, <laughs> probably what I should be calling them, <laughs> um, they are important, I think, for new writers starting out because you're asking people to take much less of a chance on you um, and you're getting out the story that you want to tell um, in its complete version whereas with a series you're not getting out the story that you want to tell in a complete version you're getting out a part of the full story that you want to tell and you need to encourage people to sort of take an interest that in that so that you can continue telling this whole grand narrative that you want to tell um so yeah. <laughs> um, I've, I've written a number of one-off books that once I've sort of, maybe once I've finished with my current project and have published my current project, will go back to and start going through and working on and getting them ready to be the next thing that I um, release. Um, which will go back to like deeper multiverse law and uh, you know getting that the whole multiverse thing out there and there's certainly definitely a lot of one-off stories I can tell within the multiverse um, but again I think when I'm dealing with the multiverse it's so much easier to deal with a whole series in order to get everything that you need to in it um, so I think the, the inclination I have towards writing series is, is partly based on the fact that I do deal with a multiverse and there is this grand overarching narrative of the multiverse, <laughs> which is fun, <laughs> she says. <laughs> um, whereas when you're sort of dealing with a one-off individual book, you are much more focused on that one-off individual story and trying to get the details for that right um and giving it this room that it needs to breathe and you know getting yourself through the story and getting the readers to connect to what's going on and understand what's going on um is more of a challenge when you're dealing with all the grand multiverse law and stuff like that but if you've got the right project um, and the right characters and the right situation and you're just focusing on that yeah, it, it works. And as I said, it's it's a lot easier to get people to kind of take a chance on a one-off self-contained book than it is to get them to take the chance on the start of a series because a series can be a commitment. It's much more of a commitment. <laughs> if you're invested in it, it's much more of a commitment than a one-off. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what else I, I have to say. I think, you know, part of this was just so that I can name drop my <laughs> Again. Not, not that I have a book to push at the moment, guys. Don't, totally don't have a book to push at the moment, guys. And I really wish the, the copy of my book was, like, right there so I could reach for it 
I like hold it up because but it's not it's like buried under a load of jackets that would usually be on the back of this chair because my kitchen is usually a mess <laughs> one sec no not like this is is an excuse at all to to talk about hyena boy again and and name drop hyena boy again that it's not like i'm currently trying to promote a book at all and must therefore name drop that book in as many vlogs as possible. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I do apologize for that. <laughs> oh, it's not like there are very, very many people watching me at the moment anyway, so I'm just selling it to myself. Okay, all right, so I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting, <laughs> mostly insane, but sort of interesting. Um, next time, next time is a bit exciting because next time is vlog 100. Yay! Somehow I have done and filmed and edited 100 vlogs. <laughs> And I've only recently just started repeating topics. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> so yeah, next week it will be sort of a bit of a celebration. Um, I, kind of in the vein of my one year anniversary celebration. Um, but for the 100th vlog. Yay! Um, so yeah, I, I hope you guys have sort of enjoyed this one. I hope you... Forgive me for shamelessly shilling my book again. <laughs> I hope you're looking forward to the 100 episodes, 100 vlog episodes next time. Um, and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.